This is 100% Classic Plus Beta. They said there's no beta or anything for this. Well, that's because this is the beta, okay? You saw Scarlet Monastery, okay? I told you what, I said, that's gonna be level 40 cap. They're gonna do a raid. That's what my prediction is. Karazhan Crips, hell yeah, dude. Dude, I'm telling you, it's like, they're not there, but there's so much like, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that's so hype, dude. I'm like, I'm like freaking out internally. So here's what you guys are gonna see. We're gonna go sit on the classic panel again. They got the WoW Classic What's Next coming up. Make Azeroth great again, brother. Hello, BlizzCon. My name's Josh Greenfield, and I'm the senior game producer on WoW Classic. I'm here to talk to you today about our new season for a classic World of Warcraft, Season of Discovery. Today, I'm going to give you an introduction and an overview of what our season is at a very high level, as well as giving you an idea of what our major features are. After this overview, I'm going to hand things off to a few other Classic team members to dig into some specifics about what I'm going to cover. So, let's go ahead and jump in. No, so, no, no, it seems fitting to start off talking about discoveries. It's, it's in the name, after all, so it seems pretty important to the season. Um, it's good now. When you first start a character in Season of Discovery, it'll look and feel identical to original World of Warcraft. You'll slay kobolds, you'll give lazy peons a bonk, all the kind of normal things you do when starting fresh in World of Warcraft. When you get to around level two, however, in the starter zone, your class trainer will offer you a new quest, and this is to go find your first rune. We'll talk about runes in a little bit more in a minute, but after that, the after that intro quest, the game simply tells you, go find more. And that's kind of where discoveries come in. Discoveries are essentially secrets hidden throughout the game world. They usually aren't quests in the traditional sense. There's nothing on your map to show them to you. This is classic after all. And some may be as simple as a treasure coffer deep in a cobalt mine, but many are small events kind of unto themselves, oftentimes requiring more than one player, uh, a little bit of creativity, or some keen observation skills okay. to obtain. One of the things we love about Azeroth is the sense of awe and wonder it inspires. It's a massive world. But due to the kind of solved nature of original WoW, it can sometimes feel a lot smaller than it did when we first started our adventures. Discoveries are a way to disrupt that a bit. Keep the world familiar, comfortable, but add enough new things to find to evoke that sense of adventure and exploration we first felt when we stepped foot in Azeroth. Beyond the next hill, deep in the next crypt or cave, something exciting could be hidden. One other thing we love about discoveries is this social and information sharing aspect. For those first few weeks of each phase, we hope to find secret finding communities pop up, both in and out of game, as players scour Azeroth to find all these little hidden things. We can't wait to read general chat as players begin sharing what they found with each other in real time. We think that social and info sharing aspect is super exciting, and we can't wait to see how long it takes for all these little secrets to be found. In order to preserve this sense of discovery, we will not be holding a public beta or PTR for Season of Discovery. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> we want day one of Season of Discovery to feel as fresh and full of surprises as we can. So we're taking a chance here to keep those first few weeks as exciting as possible. The last thing we'll say about discoveries now is that we wanted to craft them in a way that really felt at home in original WoW. Many times when playtesting amongst ourselves, we'd find a new NPC or an object, and someone would hesitate and say, like, is this from 2004? Is this, is this new? And we're like, yeah, it's new. It, like, that's new to the season. And to us, that's a great success. The idea here is that these things feel as like a natural part of Azeroth as it was at this point in WoW's history. Next, let's talk a little bit about level banded content phases and what that means. In essence, level banded content phases are how we're going to approach the level up journey in Season of Discovery. When we initially launch, the level cap in Season of Discovery will be level 25. After a number of weeks, the level cap will increase to a higher level for the next phase. So, why a level cap of 25 to start with? Well, our inspiration for this actually came from the WoW Classic Beta in 2019. We saw how much fun the game was when the level was capped at a lower level, and how players would find new and exciting talent and item combinations to optimize around. And this is something we've always looked back fondly on, and it's something we've wanted to sort of explore ever since. Uh, we also realized how approachable an initial level cap, lower level cap could be. We talk a lot internally about approachability on WoW Classic and respecting players' time. 
there's a major goal of this level banded approach to, to really give you a chance to get into it. One of the things we really consistently see on forums or social media too is, is it too late to start? And oftentimes we'll hear this literally within a day or two of a new release. And obviously it's never too late to start playing classic WoW. True. But as we've all you know, grown into additional responsibilities and found ourselves spending maybe a little less time playing games than we used to, we can definitely feel that sense of kind of fear of missing out or FOMO when we log in after a long week and see our friends 10 or 20 levels ahead of us. And for that, this level banded approach is perfect. There will be plenty to do in each le new, new leveling journey uh, with from the quests and dungeons and battlegrounds we all know and love to finding all the brand new things to discover across Azeroth. And then later on, leveling new alts to find all of their hidden discoveries as well. There's lots to do, but we're hoping that you won't ever feel that sense of being behind just because you couldn't play on a given day. I like what they're saying. We also plan to give a very sizable experience boost to the previous level band every time we raise the level cap. This is kind of similar to Joyous Journeys and Wrath Classic, if you're familiar with that. So even if you miss a phase or want to level an alt, you'll be able to catch up to your friends in no time. So the next thing we want to talk about is in-game at, at level cap. So when we kind of decided on this level banded content approach, we had to kind of sit down and ask ourselves, what is in-game when the level cap is 25? And first, I think it makes sense to talk a little bit about, about our inspiration. And this is something we really keep coming back to a lot on Classic. Since this is a version of original WoW, we wanted to start out grounded in familiar locations and put the focus for the new stuff on fresh gameplay and mechanics in those iconic dungeons and locales. To that end, our first raid in Season of Discovery will be the iconic dungeon, Black Fathom Deeps, reimagined as a 10-player raid instance. Thank you. Next, one of our main goals is to ensure that these are fully featured, deep, satisfying raids, and not simply the addition of a few mechanics to existing encounters as they were in 2004. All of these encounters are a full ground up redesign and should feel like proper raid encounters. And of course, with new raids comes lots of new loot. In addition to raids, we also really want to play up that PvP aspect. And as a result, we're planning to add several outdoor PvP events to the game as the level caps increase. Thank you. Lastly, one of the things we're most excited about is where we go when we start getting to higher levels. We are leaving the door open to the possibility of completely new experiences and the prospects of exploring previously unfinished or unused locales for future raid and dungeon content. I know, I'm excited too. I'm excited too. I'm telling you, literally everything that you're saying now. We think that level 25 is going to be full of great, memorable gameplay that feels right at home in original WoW. But this is the, just the first step, and we think the best is yet to come. I guarantee. So next, let's kind of change gears and talk about rune engraving a little bit. So this is one of the most exciting new things about Season of Discovery. One of the most consistent pieces of feedback we've gotten from previous iterations of original WoW, such as our Season of Mastery, is that many players would like to try some adjustments to their favorite class or spec. Uh, we really wanted to take a chance with Season of Discovery and go kind of wild here, and we did. That's where rune engraving comes in. Rune engraving is a new skill that all Season of Discovery characters know automatically on character creation. Rune engraving allows you to gather, learn, and apply new class abilities directly to your equipment, kind of like enchants. In the initial 1 through 25 experience, you'll be able to discover runes in your chest, legs, and glove slots. And as the level cap increases, additional runes for other item slots will be discoverable over time. Once learned, runes are permanent and can be applied and reapplied to your, your gear so at will, just out of combat. One of the most exciting things about these runes is that they exist completely outside of the talent system, meaning that you could very realistically splash in you know, uh, damage abilities with a healing talent spec so you could soul a little bit better, or you could swap maybe to tanking ability runes uh, to round out the tank spot in your five-player group if you're missing one. 
We, you may also encounter previously faction-specific paladin and shaman buffs as runes, which helps bring some parity to each faction without those classes losing their unique flavor or the factions losing their unique flavor. In order to also streamline the talent system to go along with runes, we do plan to adjust the respec cost to be much more nominal in Season of Discovery, particularly at low levels. And that's not all. That's not all. Who knows? Maybe, just maybe, someday, you won't be constrained to just one talent spec in Season of Discovery. Who knows? So, overall, We've been playing this a ton internally. We've been having so much fun with it. It's everything we love about classic, plus so much more. At this, I'd like to hand this off to, over to one of our lead software engineers, Nora Valletta, to talk about some specific abilities you may encounter on the different classes, as well as to talk a bit about our PVP plans for Season of Discovery. Take it away, Nora. Season okay, let's hear it. I'm, dude, I'm actually turning around on Season Thanks, Josh. A bit. Hey, really BlizzCon. Am. My yeah. name's Nora Valletta, and along with Anna, I'm a lead software engineer on WoW Classic. There are... <laughs> Thanks. There are over 100 runes in the 1 to 25 leveling bracket across all classes, and we'd love for you guys to go forth and discover them on your own. However, to give you an idea of what to expect, I have a few to share with you today. First things first, I want to share some of the things we had in mind when designing runes in Season of Discovery. One is to shake up the meta. Our seasonal content is a great opportunity to deliver WoW Classic, but with a twist. With our non-seasonal content, we try to deliver a classic experience close to the original, but with seasons, we have the freedom to experiment with what-if scenarios, such as what if rogues could tank, what if paladins did have, an, have a taunt? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> On that point, <laughs> we wanted to introduce abilities such that each class has something special, something that other classes can point to and go, dang, that's so cool, I wish I could do that. Many of the runes you find are greatest hits remixes of popular abilities from various WoW expansions, so many of them will be familiar to you. That said, some of these familiar abilities may actually behave a little differently than you remember. Some spells and abilities you'll discover have never been introduced before in any WoW expansion. For these, <laughs> we were careful to make sure they were an appropriate fit for class I'm fantasy. Class fantasy. That's exactly Most importantly, we want classic to continue to feel like classic. Many of the iconic spells and abilities you've seen in various WoW expansions feel fitting for that expansion or fitting for modern WoW, but would feel out of place in classic, so we tried to avoid introducing anything with a too modern feel and made adjustments wherever it made sense. So key. Anyways, enough of that. <laughs> Let's take a sneak peek at some of those abilities. Druids. I think, I think in Season of Discovery, you have an interrupt called Skull Bash, which can be used in cat or bear form. Fury of Storm Rage removes the mana cost of Wrath. Dealing damage with Wrath has a chance to make your next healing touch instant. Wild Growth applies a heal over time effect to your target and up to five nearby party members. Hello, Hunters. Beast Mastery will increase your pet's damage, health, and focus regen. Growl is now a proper taunt. Explosive Shot is a ranged damage over time ability, and Lone Wolf gives you a damage boost if you have no active pet. Pair this oh, with dual sick. wielding, and you've got yourself a mean melee hunter. Okay. Mages. Oh. <laughs> Ice Lance is an instant frost spell oh that deals triple damage to frozen targets. Why are you giving Living flame causes flames to erupt and chase a nearby enemy, leaving a burning trail in its wake. And regeneration is a heal, which marks your target with a temporal beacon. Another rune ability called Rewind Time will heal the damage taken over the previous five seconds. You can heal other people with this, by the way, not just yourself, so I hope you've made room on your roster for mage healers. Paladins. In WoW Classic, they don't have a taunt, but here it is in Season of Discovery. Hand of Reckoning is your taunt, 
Knowing this ability will also increase the threat bonus of Righteous Fury and cause you to gain mana when healed by other players. Crusader Strike is a weapon attack. It's a weapon attack which costs no additional mana and instead regenerates your mana slightly with each hit. And Seal of Martyrdom can be activated to cause Ooh. melee attacks to strike other nearby targets. You'll lose health when inflicting damage with this. However, nearby party members will gain mana based on the damage you take. Priests. Big time. You can channel penance to hear, heal near, nearby friendly targets or deal damage to enemy targets. Prayer of Mending heals your target the next time they take damage or receive healing. Afterwards, it'll bounce to another friendly player nearby. Homunculi animates three miniature copies of your character, which will attack your target with a mace, a sword, and an axe, reducing their attack speed, attack power, and armor, respectively. Rose. Okay. From Stealth, Shadow Strike allows you to teleport behind your target and strike for a nice big chunk of damage. And Venom is a finishing move. It deals poison damage based on your deadly poison doses on the target and also increases the frequency of applying instant poison for some time afterwards. Just a Flesh Wound is our rogue tank ability. You generate way more threat, you take reduced physical damage while Blade Dance is active, you're less likely to be critically hit by melee attacks, and your faint ability turns into a taunt called Tease. Shamans. <laughs> Lava Lash deals offhand weapon damage. Offhand. In Season of Discovery, Enhancement Shamans can dual wield with the help of another rune not pictured here. Happy hunting. Healing Rain is a gradual AoE heal which can be placed on the ground, or on a lamppost, or on the ceiling. Way of Earth allows you to perform the coveted role of Shaman Tank. With this, you'll deal increased threat, you'll take less damage, and Earth Shock becomes your taunt. Warlocks. <laughs> Haunt deals damage, increases all shadow damage you deal to the target, and heals you for the damage it dealt once it's dispelled or expires. Chaos Bolt sends a big beefy bolt of fire at the enemy. It always hits, it can't be resisted, and it causes all of your fire spells to pierce through absorption effects. And Metamorphosis. <laughs> this is your shapeshift, allowing you to transform into a demon, similar to a druid's bear form increasing your armor and reducing your chance to be critically hit. Searing Pain becomes instant, Shadow Bolt becomes a melee cleave, and Curse of Recklessness is your taunt. Warriors. <laughs> Victory Rush is a weapon attack that can be used after killing an enemy. It will heal you for a certain percentage of your health. Devastate will cause your Sunder Armor to deal main hand weapon damage, increased for each stack of Sunder Armor already on the target. And Raging Blow is a vicious strike that deals heavy damage, but can only be used while enraged. Now this is just a taste of all the abilities coming to classes in Season of Discovery. And really, bottom line, we want everyone <laughs> to feel OP. <laughs> Anyways, enough about runes. Let's instead turn our attention to the ancient forest of Ashenvale in northern Kalimdor. Ashenvale is known for its beauty, its rich natural resources, and its role as a hotly contested territory between the Horde and the Alliance. In Season of Discovery, earning kills while in Ashenvale will trigger a zone-wide PvP event. During this event, a leader will appear in the zone for each faction, a Farseer for the Horde, and a Priestess of the Moon for the Alliance. Your objective is simple. It's to defeat the enemy leader. Now this is easier said than done. These leaders are tough, so you'll have to work together to take them out. In addition to the main camps where those faction leaders reside, various other camps will spawn across the zone for each faction. The Priestess of the Moon and the Farseer are each buffed by respective leaders in those smaller camps. The more of those small camps you can take out, 
the weaker your enemy's faction leader will become. Sounds familiar. It's much like Alterac Valley. This event is an awesome way to earn honor, as well as reputation with Warsong Gulch factions, which allows you to unlock some of the best level 25 gear in the game. You'll also be able to earn a mount, which you can actually use at level 25, but only in Ashenvale. It will increase your speed by 50%, giving you the extra boost you need to seek and destroy the enemy. So, come kick some ash in Ashenvale. I'll see you there. Anyways, I've done enough talking. It's time for me to pass things off to Tim, who's going to talk to you about raids and the PvE endgame. Take it away, Tim. Thank you, Nora. A BlizzCon! <laughs> My name is Tim Jones, and I'm the assistant lead designer on World of Warcraft Classic. Woo! <laughs> You know, multiplayer content is the heart of World of Warcraft. Whether we're questing together, running a dungeon, crafting an item for a friend, or chatting in guild about where to find that new metamorphosis rune for Warlock, WoW offers one of the richest multiplayer experiences across all of gaming. And Season of Discovery aims to deliver on providing new group content that's both challenging and rewarding. Now first, I want everyone to take a moment with me and imagine Alongside the Zorm Strand on Ashenvale's north coast lies the ruins of an ancient elven temple to the goddess Saloon. Evil stirs within, drawing the lights of the Naga and the Twilight's Hammer in search of power and anything that could hasten the coming of the old gods. You know, maybe you've been here before, maybe not. No matter your familiarity with this place, it's hard not to be drawn in by the mystique the rich art, the level design, as well as the robust creature and spell ecology of Black Fathom Deeps. Now, on the Classic team, we couldn't help but ask ourselves, could this amazing location be more than just a five-player dungeon? So we're excited. Get your level 25 Prebus, equip your runes, find nine of your best friends, and get ready. The Classic team is proud to announce Level Up Raids. New instance challenges for raid groups at, uh, to experience the max level for each of Season of Discovery's content bands. Okay. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. I was cheering because everyone was like, what the hell does that mean? You know, at level 25, Black Fathom Deeps is the first, the first level up raid that you'll experience in Season of Discovery. You know, groups should be easy to form. Grab a couple tanks and healers, make a party of 10, you're good to go. God knows. Everyone and their mom can tank and heal in Season of Discovery now, so that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> and content phases in Season of Discovery won't be as long as traditional classic expansion patches either. And we want you to have as many opportunities to explore and plunder the riches within. And as such, Black Fathom will offer a three-day lockout, much like the raid Zulgarub. <laughs> That's actually the really story's cool. the same, super, super, super location and creatures may be familiar, familiar to some, but the challenges and rewards are brand new. Seven new bosses are here to both entertain and test your skills. And how could we not make raid content without new loot? Existing quests and rewards have also been updated for the raid as well. And you'll even be able to find secrets within the raid. Can you solve the mystery of the Twilight Artisan? Can you find the recipes for the Black Fathom Sharpening Stones and Wizard Oil? And will you be the first group to access the new world buff, Boon of Black Fathom? Ooh. <laughs> okay. I love your guys' enthusiasm. This is amazing. Let's be behind the curtain at what challenges await players in Black Fathom. You know, or as we affectionately call it, BFD. Not to be confused with BRD or BFA or BWL or BWD. You guys get the idea. <laughs> Baron Aquanus, he guards the entrance. No longer a simple quest NPC. You must challenge his elemental lieutenants that inhabit the Fathom Stones and defeat him. And in doing so, you may face off against Aquanus himself atop the infamous jumping puzzle. <laughs> you know, and jump you must to get in range of the Baron, but beware both the boss and your teammates because there are many apparel that may knock you off. 
In all honesty, this boss is lightly tuned, and there are some hidden power-ups below the water to help you uh, return to the platform. <laughs> so we did this earlier. We, we, we Next off, you must face against Gamura, the fearsome turtle that's been swimming in the enchanted waters of the deeps for a long, long time. You know, exposure to these energies has granted her both power and size, but most importantly, she's now protected by a magical barrier that protects her against almost any attack. Break through this barrier and start blasting for massive damage. Get your orange parts. <laughs> you know, all this commotion will bring you to the attention of Lady Saraves, a powerful and reckless Naga Sea Witch who commands a legion of Black Fathom Elite in Myrmidons. She is a formidable foe that will overwhelm you unless you find a way to turn her own spells against her and her minions. Now, these three bosses round out the prologue of Black Fathom Deeps, and in all three are available to fight in our demo in Hall D. Check it out. <laughs> and that's not it. Witness the corruption of Gellihast and take on the march of the Void Murlocs. Break past Lorgas Jet's magical barriers and corrupted totems. Conquer your dreams as you challenge Twilight Lord Kelris. Okay. And good luck against the giant Void Hydra. Seriously, you're going to need it. <laughs> so we didn't see any of this. We only saw the, we only saw the first one. And not to forget, there will be glittering prizes awaiting you, including some of these fancy items. Ooh. Now, telling you all this is great but I think we'd rather just show you. So it is my pleasure to provide a quick sneak peek video of the raid, edited by the team itself, as though it was pulled straight from a community website in 2005. Please take a look. Oh, sick, let's go. It's very funny. Oh, I wish it was more involved. It would have been really funny if it was more But it is true, it, that is how they used to be. So that's it for today, guys. We're looking forward to. Oh shit! Okay, that's uh, that shouldn't be here. Um, okay, uh, that should definitely. Um, okay, sorry. We should have. Uh, okay. Oh, cares and grips. Cares and grips. Oops. Let's go. <laughs> that's it for today. <laughs> On behalf of the classic team. And as Anna mentioned at the top, nothing that we do in WoW Classic would be possible without all of your support and your voice. Thank you so much for making the dream of WoW Classic and all the experiences we're working on a reality. We can't wait to see what else we have in store for the future. We can't wait for you to see. <laughs> so please stay tuned for Hearthstone, what's next coming up right after this. And we hope you have enjoyed this look ahead at what's oh. next for WoW Classic. I want to reiterate, go, this is just dude. a taste of all that you're going to uncover in Season of Discovery. Yeah, cool. And for those of you here at BlizzCon, right we back. hope you get to take on the Chat first three bosses of our Black Fathom Deeps, Deeps, Deeps raid on the show floor. And for everyone else, we are so excited for you to experience it when Season of Discovery launches worldwide in just a few short weeks on November 30th! This is classic plus beta. This is classic plus 
beta 100%. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Dude. Hell yeah, dude. I'm so freaking hyped, dude. I actually think it's gonna be good, man. I, I do actually think it's gonna be good. This is classic plus beta. That's what I'm that's what I'm calling it. I know it is. This is hundred percent classic plus beta. Season discovery. Season of discovery is hundred percent classic plus beta. They said there's no beta or anything for this. Well, that's because this is the beta, okay? And you saw the, the sprinkles. You saw Scarlet Monastery, okay? I told you what, I said that's gonna be level 40 cap. They're gonna do a raid. That's what my prediction is. Karazhan Crips, hell yeah, dude. Like, that, dude, I'm telling you, it's like, they're not there, but there's so much, like, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that's so hype, dude. I'm like, I, I'm like freaking out internally. You must fan the Brown Palace is alive. It is, it is. Yeah.